Oh man, what's going on? Okay, so being that tomorrow is the release for Phyrexia All Is One, and today there's literally like no exciting magic things to do, which I, it's absolutely my least favorite thing. These in betweens of sets, like where the cube ends and a new set begins, there's this gap of time where like you don't even want to play formats really because they're just going to get updated. Like I'm going to play a pioneer deck that's going to get new tools in the new set. So why am I wasting my time playing the old format? That's only going to be around for three more days. So instead we're going to talk about these counter spells. This is going to be a counter spell tier list. And we are going to talk about, uh, these are, these should be an order of release. So we have S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, and D tier all right here on the tier list starting with this guy this is the og of counter spells this is the original counter spell i believe the art is by anson maddox is that correct i don't know i can't find out yes i can i can just open this and we'll just go counter spell scryfall and this is definitely the og of counter spells uh, it's the best counter. So here's the thing. You can't always base magic art on the art itself. Sometimes you base it on feelings, right? Like Oracle tag counterspell. No, just counterspell. Sometimes you base it on like nostalgia. Sometimes you base it on like, oh, what cool feelings does this give me? It's Mark Pool. I don't know why I thought Anson Maddox for some reason. I think that's because a lot of there's a lot of old Anson Maddox art that is good let's look up anson maddox art and see what i'm thinking of i feel like i just saw something recently and i think that's just why it's in my head uh animate dead <clears throat> daryl or which is fascinating it also might have been something from dominaria remastered that i saw I'm not sure why, but Land of War Elves, Maze of Ith, Onulet. We just looked up Onulet in the last in the last draft we did because I wanted to know what Onulet meant as a word. It turns out it's not a word. Um, yes, I have the Mark Pool Secret Layer one in here as well, and there's a reason for that. This is obvious. I mean, this is the best counter spell. Like it's it's literally known as Mustard Fingers because of the mustard-like substance coming out of his fingers. It's it's an S-tier counterspell. Ice Age. This was the first time counterspell was reprinted outside of a course, after outside of like Alpha Beta Unlimited, which makes sense because Ice Age was the next huge expansion. Uh, we're, we're not reading... So it's hard to say. Like, we're not reading the art per se, Obviously, the art will play a part in the rating, but we're also just rating the nostalgia of it. Like, this might not be the the best art counterspell, but it is the most iconic counterspell, and I would take a, an alpha or a beta counterspell over any, any counterspell on this list, bar none. Monetary value aside. You are rating the feels, but also art is a part of the feels. You know what I mean? Um... So yeah, I think this is A tier. I think this is a great counter spell. It looks it 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 looks like a counter spell. It's iconic. It's got the retro frame. It's an Ice Age card. I'm okay with it. I like it a lot. Uh, this one I kind of want to put between S and A tier. And the reason is because it's got that retro frame. This was an arena promo. Let me. I'm gonna actually. Uh, find that it's an arena promo by the by the artist dom and it just says dom with an exclamation mark at the end uh this was a dci legend membership promo and it's really cool it's really also pretty limited and they go for about 40 bucks I think it's an S tier counter spell. Like it's very iconic. It's not, it's actually not super iconic. It's iconic in the sense that like, it's one of those pieces of magic history that like some people might not even know about. Like this is a, a super cool counter spell. It also, there were similar cards um, that had uh, alternate arts like this. Incinerate was one of them. And I believe 
I believe there were a couple others as well. Uh, but I have the incinerate art in my cube. And that one is cool too. But that one's by Jock. The artist Jock. Uh, this... This is an A-tier counterspell, this Tempest counterspell. Again, like, the art is fantastic. It's really iconic. It's it's Tempest. A lot of these come from, from a time where counterspells were not only uh, just printed normally in regular sets, but, you know, they weren't looked at as being super powerful. Like, they were just normal. normal. Like, Dark Ritual was also in, in these sets regularly. And it's interesting because apparently a time came where they were just like, you know, we can't keep printing Dark Ritual and Counterspell in core sets and like basic sets. Um, yeah, and the, the the flavor text on this one was, it was probably a lousy spell in the first place. So pretty good. Uh, this one is... I, I, don't like, I don't like this Counterspell. I think it's kind of goofy. Uh... If, if we're going to put a counterspell in a D tier, I think it's this one. This is unfortunately done by Hannibal King. It was first printed in 5th edition. This is a 5th edition counterspell. It was a white border counterspell. Uh, it was printed in gold frame twice for uh, two world championship decks. And it was then again, it was then printed again in 6th edition. It was printed again in Starter in 1999, and it was also printed in, what set is this, Battle Royale box set? And then it was printed again in another World Championship deck. So this, this counterspell actually has like seven different printings. And I don't even think the art is that good. It's kind of, it's it's a little cheesier than I'd like. You know what I mean? Like it's it's from that, it feels like it's from that era of like, when you look at seventh edition cards, and then you compare them to other cards. Like if you compare like a 7th edition Duress or a 7th edition Oppression to say an Urza's Duress or an Urza's Oppression, the Urza's versions of those cards, they look more serious. They look more fantasy-based. They look more adult. <clears throat> they look like actual fantasy art. Whereas the 7th edition versions just kind of look childish. And I feel like this is kind of a childish-looking counterspell. But that's just my opinion. <clears throat> Obviously, your your mileage may vary. So we're going to go and put this Mercadian Masks counterspell. This is a top-tier counterspell. I think it's either S or A tier. I'm going to put it in the A tier for now. Uh, same with Tempest. I think both of these are super, super iconic, retro-framed counter spells and obviously as you guys have made notice may have noticed uh the retro framing definitely gives them a nod uh in my in my judgment mm. yeah i mean <clears throat> you guys think it's s tier and i i don't i don't disagree with you like i said i i would put it in, be in between either of these i think i would probably put it in s tier i think it's i like it better than the tempest counter spell but it's on the same level as the Tempest Counterspell for me, where they're both like, there was this series of cards in in sets like, it was in like Mirage, Tempest, Mercadian Masks, and like Urza Saga. And any sort of like one of those basic reprintable cards, like Dark Ritual, Duress, Counterspell, they all have really cool versions in those sets. Um, And actually, I might just drop... I might just drop Ice Age down to B. I think it's a great counterspell, but I personally don't choose it that often. I, I would I would sooner choose Tempest or Mercadian Masks over it. So I think we're going to evolve that. Uh, next, we have the 7th edition counterspell I was referring to, and it's right here. It's just not... No, just negative. <clears throat> no offense. <clears throat> Man, my throat's... My voice is gone. No, for, no offense to Mark Romanowski, uh, Romanowski, the artist, but it just doesn't, this, this, it's a white bordered card. It was printed in seventh edition and then it has three world championship deck printings. And, you know, it's just not, I don't know. It doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't hit any iconic notes. It's a little too colorful and playful. It's a little too cartoony. And... You know, it's I, I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't make me feel anything. The seventh edition foil ones look much better, sure, maybe. But you know, 
I don't want to play with foils, I guess. And we have a ton of great counter spells that don't have to be foiled to look better, I guess. <clears throat> I, I don't know. Like, I don't value the the weirdness, I guess. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's going to go there. Um, Next is the counterspell from the Jace dual decks. Uh, this is from the Jace versus Chandra dual deck. It's a, I think this is a C. I don't think it's a D. Um, I think it's a fine counterspell. I'm probably never going to choose it. Between the modern frame... Um, like it just doesn't do anything for me, but I don't hate it. I don't think it's, it's not offending me. And I think like both of these are kind of offensive and that they're, they're kind of goofy and they're white bordered and meh. I, I definitely don't think this is the worst one. I think these are, I, I would choose this over these. Um, but actually I will amend this and say, this is a D Whereas this one, this, the, the spell book, the signature spell book version is probably the C. Um, so yeah, I would definitely choose the signature spell book version over, over the regular version. I, I'm a big fan of alternate arts and alternate borders. So if there's like an alternate frame version, I will definitely prefer that. Uh, this is, what is this? Eternal Masters. I think this was first in. Yeah, this is the Eternal Masters counterspell. <clears throat> it was also printed in the Masters 25 set. Uh, and it was also printed, printed in Commander Legends. And the Commander Legends actually had this extended art version as well. Uh, the, the regular version is just going in D. There's no flavor text. I think a, a lot of early counterspells had flavor text that made them great. Uh, like the Ice Age counterspell... Let's look at that. The duel was going badly for me, and Zur thought I was finished. He boasted that he would eat my soul, but all he ate were his words. Like, that's good. The Mercadian Mask counterspell. Your attack has been rendered harmless. It is, however, quite pretty. Like, that's a good one. I actually, I kind of like flavor text on counterspells. The, the Tempest one is obviously, it's probably a lousy spell in the first place. So, I mean, like, there's these cool, like, kind of witty retorts for for old school counter spells usually i can appreciate the elegance of like just counter this spell and no text like on wrath of god destroy all creatures you know that that's cool but <clears throat> this isn't winning any awards like it's going to take a lot for a modern frame counter spell to really to really do anything for me i think um that being said i would move you know same same with the the spellbook version i would move the extended art version up into c because i just like I like extended art cards. I think being able to see, um, you know, where the, sorry, I got distracted by the chat. Yeah. I just like being able to see more of the art and like being able to take away part of the modern frame just really benefits the card. I think, uh, next we have the Amonkhet frame. I, you know what? I think these Amonkhet frames, I think they've aged very, very well. Uh, I think the Amonkhet frame looks cool. I'm going to put it in B. Uh, this is probably a really controversial one. I think these are super cool. Uh, I think they're harder to read. I think the legibility is a question. The text box is very easy to read. You know how much counterspell costs. The art is, is, is really cool, I think. Um, I, I think I would put this in B. If I had these, I'd probably play with them if they weren't foil because they would they're probably Pringles, but you know, I think it's I, I like these. I think these have aged kind of well. And yeah, I, I think this is a B. Strixhaven Archive. Again, this is gonna get some props because it is a alternate art counter spell. So I like it more than a normal, like anything that's not modern frame, any of the modern frame, you're losing a lot of points with me. I'm just not a big fan of modern frames. When it comes to, when it comes to cards, I value retro frame and I value extended art borderless versions much, much higher. I also appreciate showcase. I just, I like the variety. I think it looks really sweet. Um, So yeah, you're like, <clears throat> this is already gaining points for not being a uh, modern frame, but I think it's, it, it's not blue enough. All these other cards are highly blue. Blue in the background, blue in the background, background, foreground. This is not a 
super blue, but like this card is actively like yellow, which really it kind of turns me off a little bit. It's not it's not ideal. I don't love it. <clears throat> but I think the Strixhaven archives were kind of a cool premise, and I like I like their inclusion in the set, and it's kind of started like the additional sets in other things like as a as a as a supplemental set in a in a pack right so you're getting like <clears throat> a normal pack of cards and then you're getting a, a strict save and archive card as well and sometimes you get a japanese version and i think the japanese is gonna it's gonna so this is interesting it's conflicting because i, I like this version a lot better than the than the english version the problem is I'm I'm the kind of person that has be I used to love foreign cards. I used to love Korean, Russian, Japanese. I love having foreign cards in my stuff, in my play stuff. I've I've strayed away from that for a couple of reasons. One is because there's so many cards being printed now that it's so much easier to forget what your cards do. When your card just says counter target spell, kind of easy to remember. <clears throat> when your card says like 17 lines of text, and it references casting cost and number of creatures and it's an X spell. Like it's a lot harder to remember exactly what a card does. The other thing is that for my cube specifically, I don't want the language to be a limitation. I don't want people to be like, oh, I don't know what this card does. Can someone explain it to me? So all of the cards I pick up are going to be in English. And I wish, I wish these were available in English because this, the art on all of these Japanese versions is fantastic. It's very, very good. <clears throat> and I would probably play with a lot of these. Plus, like, it's a lot more blue than the, the English version, uh, which is a huge... I'm a big fan of having the card's color identity be represented in the general tone of the card. So if it's a blue card, I want to kind of see a blue... I want to get the feeling of blue from looking at it. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think the English version... The, the English version is significantly worse in terms of art, but I... I do have a problem with playing with Japanese cards just because I don't like having to like not have access to the information because there's so many games of magic where you're like, Oh man, I accidentally misread this or, Oh, I thought it did this instead. And like in those situations, like it's like that can, that can win or lose you a game in a, in a, in a high level event. But that being said, I think these are super cool. I think a lot of the Japanese Strixhaven uh, archive cards would be in B for me. And that's where we're going to put this. This this counterspell, this is from Modern Horizons 2. This is the borderless counterspell, which is always a step up from extended art because you get a little more art. And I, I like this counterspell a lot, actually. I, I think this is probably one of my favorite counterspells. I will definitely put this in, in the B tier for myself. Uh, I like the way this counterspell looks. I love the colors they use. Uh, I think it just looks super cool. And... Yeah, it, it's one of my favorite counter spells. This was my go-to counter spell in my modern uh, slash pioneer slash legacy play stuff before uh, I replaced them with another another counter spell. This is the retro frame Mark Pool counter spell. I mean, <clears throat> again, I'm gonna give it a D tier because it's it's modern. No, I said retro frame. I think I meant modern frame. I'm gonna give it a D tier because it's modern frame. And I just don't, I'm never going to play with this over any of the, the retro frame alternatives. And I'm not going to play with it over any of any of the cards in B or C either. I actually, I might play with them over some of the cards in C. So I'm going to actually put it, I'm going to put it in C. It's going to go in C because I would probably play it over these three, <clears throat> but it's not going to get played over these. I would, I would choose probably any one of these four instead. This to me is an A tier counter spell. I absolutely love uh this Mateus Manhanini counter spell from the Secret Layer. Uh it's super cool, it's super colorful. The flavor text is if only there were a way to counter your inevitable whining. <laughs> so good, dude. Oh man. Yeah, I I this is one of my favorite counter spells. I love all of the art from this specific secret layer. So if you guys haven't seen it, uh, definitely check it out. This is my current counter spell that I'm using. So I guess for me, I think this is an S tier counter spell for me. You know what? I was going to put it in A tier because I think it's it's not as iconic as these three, but I like it a lot. And I think that's what makes it an S tier counter spell for me. 
so yeah, I think it's an S tier. Uh, this one is the same. See, it's funny. Like you're 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 watching me rank these, uh, the same counter spell three times. But the modern frame is a D. The extended art is a C, and the retro frame is a B. So you can kind of see where my priorities are. And I think the older and more iconic a card is, the more I want it in a retro frame. Like, I don't mind seeing, what's a new card? Like, you know, a, a Teferi Hero of Dominaria. That doesn't have to be in a retro frame. I'll choose an extended art or a borderless card. But if it's a counter spell, Bird of Paradise, Wrath of God, these, these, all, these old iconic cards that originally were in retro frame that you think about the retro frame when you think of them. Those are cards I love seeing in retro frame. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I would definitely choose this over the extended art and over the, the modern frame. All of the modern frames are going to be in D for me, except for the, the Mark pool classic counter spell. And these are my S tier. These are the ones I would probably choose over anything else on this list. I think uh, Tempest would come next. And then, you know what? I'm, I, I would even be tempted to put this in A tier because if I had the option between Tempest and Counter and, and the Amonkhet, I'd probably choose it. But the foil aspect of it, the fact that it's only available in foil makes it a B tier because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play it over over other cards, I think. So I I'm actually I would be very curious what you guys think. Um this would be my my counterspell tier. This is my counterspell tier list from S to D. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys like this. I hope you thought it was fun. I hope you guys, I'm going to, I'm going to copy this and put it in the chat and you guys can do it yourself and let me know on like Twitter. If you guys, uh, if you want to share it with me, I can, I can see what you guys thought. And, uh, foil Mercady masks are alpha, nothing else. Uh, foil is, is any foil is going to be D tier for me. I do not appreciate the Pringling or the way it, it marks my deck. Uh, I just rather not deal with it. Uh, and alpha, same thing with the corners. Like I'd prefer beta over alpha if I'm, if I'm playing because of consistency, but yeah, your mileage may vary and it's uh totally subjective. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Be sure to like, and subscribe and I'll see you next time.